before the Sunday message today, we shall have a brief period of scripture reading. Chapter 17 These words spake Jesus, and lifted up his eyes to heaven, and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy Son, that thy Son also may glorify thee. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. And all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee. Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one, as we are. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me I have kept, and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. And now come I to thee. And these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word, that they all may be one. As thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And the glory which thou gavest me I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. I in them, and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Father, I will that they also, whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which thou hast given me. For thou lovedst me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world hath not known thee, but I have known thee, and these have known that thou hast sent me. And I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. Chapter 18 When Jesus had spoken these words, he went forth with his disciples over the brook Cedron, where was a garden, into the which he entered, and his disciples. And Judas also, which betrayed him, knew the place, for Jesus oft times resorted thither with his disciples. Judas then, having received a band of men and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, cometh thither with lanterns and torches and weapons. Jesus therefore, knowing all things that should come upon him, went forth and said unto them, Whom seek ye? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus saith unto them, I am he. And Judas also, which betrayed him, stood with them. As soon then as he had said unto them, I am he, they went backward and fell to the ground. Then asked he them again, Whom seek ye? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. 
Jesus answered, I have told you that I am he. If therefore ye seek me, let these go their way. That the saying might be fulfilled which he spake, Of them which thou gavest me have I lost none. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it, and smote the high priest's servant, and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Then said Jesus unto Peter, Put up thy sword into the sheath. The cup which my father hath given me, shall I not drink it? Then the band and the captain and the officers of the Jews took Jesus and bound him, and led him away to Annas first, for he was father-in-law to Caiaphas, which was the high priest that same year. Now Caiaphas was he which gave counsel to the Jews that it was expedient that one man should die for the people. And Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did another disciple. That disciple was known unto the high priest, and went in with Jesus into the palace of the high priest. But Peter stood at the door without. Then went out that other disciple, which was known unto the high priest, and spake unto her that kept the door, and brought in Peter. Then saith the damsel that kept the door unto Peter, Art not thou also one of this man's disciples? He saith, I am not. And the servants and officers stood there, who had made a fire of coals, for it was cold, and they warmed themselves. And Peter stood with them and warmed himself. The high priest then asked Jesus of his disciples and of his doctrine. Jesus answered him, I spake openly to the world. I ever taught in the synagogue and in the temple, whither the Jews always resort, and in secret have I said nothing. Why askest thou me? Ask them which heard me what I have said unto them. Behold, they know what I said. And when he had thus spoken, one of the officers which stood by struck Jesus with the palm of his hand, saying, Answerest thou the high priest so? Jesus answered him, If I have spoken evil, bear witness of the evil. But if well, why smitest thou me? Now Annas had sent him bound unto Caiaphas the high priest. And Simon Peter stood and warmed himself. They said therefore unto him, Art not thou also one of his disciples? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the servants of the high priest, being his kinsman, whose ear Peter cut off, saith, Did not I see thee in the garden with him? Peter then denied again, and immediately the cock crew. Then led they Jesus from Caiaphas unto the hall of judgment, and it was early. And they themselves went not into the judgment hall, lest they should be defiled, but that they might eat the Passover. Pilate then went out unto them and said, What accusation bring ye against this man? They answered and said unto him, If he were not a malefactor, we would not have delivered him up unto thee. Then said Pilate unto them, Take ye him and judge him according to your law. The Jews therefore said unto him, It is not lawful for us to put any man to death that the saying of Jesus might be fulfilled, which he spake, signifying what death he should die. Then Pilate entered into the judgment hall again, and called Jesus, and said unto him, Art thou the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, Sayest thou this thing of thyself? Or did others tell it thee of me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Thine own nation and the chief priests have delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight, that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Every one that is of the truth heareth my voice. Pilate saith unto him, What is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews, and saith unto them, I find in him no fault at all. But ye have a custom, that I should release unto you one at the Passover. Will ye therefore that I release unto you the king of the Jews? Then cried they all again, saying, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber.
One day you would say it again to go and he asks to test brother Joe. He said to God, just take down your head, and I will steal his soul. So God said yes, and Job confessed, I'll trust the Lord all the way. In the Bible, we're told that it came for the gold, and he won the victory that day.
Praise the Lord. Are you there? I said, Praise the Lord. I welcome everyone to our worship service today. The first at Bagada for a number of months. And I pray that today the Lord will enrich your life and the blessing of gathering together. The Lord will grant everyone in Jesus' name. You take the blessings of God home and the presence of the Lord will enrich every life in Jesus' name. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this hour. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Thank you for bringing us together. Thank you because the pandemic is getting over and we're saying and announcing that you'll brush it off and wipe it away from our land and from the world in Jesus' name. And we're praying that anything your people have lost all through this period, you will replenish and fill our lives with your glory and with your blessings in Jesus' name. Do good in every life. I pray, Lord, as your word comes for today, the power in your word and the refreshing in your word will come to everyone today in Jesus' name. Bless us here. Bless all the people who are listening everywhere. And we pray that we'll never be the same again in Jesus' name. All the virtues of Christ, all the blessings of Calvary, everything you have provided for us, we pray will be ours in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. And everybody shout. God bless you. You can see now we're coming to Revelation chapter 3. And we're looking at verses 7 to 13. Revelation chapter 3. We're looking at verses 7 all through to 13. It's a message that Jesus Christ sent to the church. He was speaking to the church in Philadelphia. And in the church in Philadelphia, this is the seed of the seven churches. And these seven churches, Christ spoke to them directly. And he has a message for you, a message for me, a message for the church today. And we pray that the message will reach every heart and penetrate every heart. And the message of Christ to everyone will not be lost on any one of us in Jesus' name. Give me a good day. Amen. amen. Revelation chapter 3, we're looking at verse 7. It says, And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, write, These six says he, that's the Christ, that's a Redeemer, that's a Lord, that's a Master. It says, These six says he, he that is holy, he that is true, and he that has the key of David, he that openeth and no man shutteth, he that shutteth and no man openeth. And then he tells us in verse 8, he says in verse 8, I know thy works. That's Christ saying, I know thy works is the Lord of knowledge, is the God of knowledge. He knows everything about all the churches at that time. And he knows everything about the church today. And talking to the church in Philadelphia, he said, I know thy works, not just that I knew, not just that I will know on the day of judgment. At this present time, he says, I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man shall shut it, for thou hast a little strength. And thou hast kept my word and hast not denied my name. And then he tells us in verse 9, he says in verse 9, Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. The love of Christ will be in your life. And that love will be full and overflowing in Jesus' name. And now he tells us in verse 10, he says in verse 10, Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also 
will keep thee from the hour of temptation which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell on the earth and then in verse 11 he tells the church telling the church at that time the church in philadelphia and telling the church today and telling you and telling me today behold i come quickly hold fast that which thou hast that no man take thy crown verse 12 tells us it says him that overcometh will i make a pillar in the temple of my god and he shall go no more out and i will write upon him the name of my god and the name of the city of my god which is new jerusalem which cometh down out of heaven from my God and I will write upon him my new name and then he says in verse 13 now he says he that has an ear let him hear what the spirit says unto the churches I pray the ear to hear and the ear to be obedient and the ear to follow after the Lord and the ear to pray and to have the grace of God in our lives as we hear the word of God the Lord will grant us such ear in Jesus name and the blessing of hearing and the blessing of doing what we hear the blessing the Lord will grant to every one of us in Jesus name as we look at the verses we have read now, we're talking about a faithful church, the church in Philadelphia, and the church of today, and our local church, and our national church, and our continental church, and the church everywhere to be a faithful church with purified, united members. A faithful church with purified and united members we're dividing the message to three parts number one the supernatural power of a transformative christ what that means is christ has the power the power to change us the power to transform us the power to turn us around and the power to make us like himself the supernatural power of our transformative Christ. Point number two is the sustained progress or sustainable progress of a trustworthy church. You see this church, the church at Philadelphia. The Lord was saying, I set an open door before you. He said, you have a small strength. You have done well. You are doing well. And yet I'm going to give you progress and you're going to move forward because of the open door that I set before you which no temptation can close and which no trial can shut which no man of whatever power can shut I'm going to sustain your progress point number two the sustainable progress of a trustworthy church point number three now is a spectacular privilege of a teachable Christian a Christian he that has an ear to hear a Christian who is diligent in hearing a Christian who is dutiful in hearing a Christian who is devoted in hearing he says it's going to be it's going to put blessing in that life and progress in that life and all the promises of God and all the prophecies of the Word of God will be that person's portion and this is a spectacular a privilege of a teachable Christian. I pray you'll be that Christian. You'll be, you'll be that believer in Jesus' name. Point number one now is the supernatural power of our transformative Christ. We're looking at Revelation chapter 3. And we're reading from verse 7, Revelation chapter 3. We're looking at verse 7. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, right? Here is the Lord Jesus Christ, our master, our redeemer. Here is the Lord Jesus Christ, the head of the church. Here is the Lord Jesus Christ, the one who paid the price for our salvation. Here is the Lord Jesus Christ. He ascended to heaven and his heaven is in heaven right now. And from heaven is sending a message to the church on earth 
the church at Philadelphia and he sent the in John the beloved and he says write to them and tell them who is writing to them and he says unto the church uh, the, the church in Philadelphia write this thing says he that is holy he that is true and he that has the key of David that openeth and no man shutteth and shutteth and no man openeth as you look at Christ here we see that Christ number one is holy holy from all eternity holy when he was on earth and when he went back to heaven he remained holy number one he is the one that is holy number two he is the one that is true he that is true and then number three he has the key of david the key the key of royalty the key of the king the key that can be in the hand of god all alone he has the key not only that what he is is able to make us what he is is able to transform us that will be like him that's why we refer to him as the transformative christ is holy is able to make us holy is true is able to make us true and he has the key is able to give us the key that key will be in your hand today the key of power will be in your hand today the key of authority will be in your hand today the key of authority and power that even you as a christian as a believer as you open nobody can shut it in jesus name and as you shut nobody will open in jesus name three things now number one the power to make us as holy as himself the power he is holy and is able to make us holy as holy as himself number two is the possibility of being true as him as he is true like him he is true is trustworthy and is truthful and the same grace and the same power and the same original nature of truthfulness that he has is able to pass that into your life and you will have it you'll be truthful and trustworthy transparently in jesus name and then number three is the possession of the key that we get from him the possession of the key from him number one the power to make us as holy as himself we're looking at revelation chapter 3 and we're looking at verse 7 and to the angel of the church in philadelphia write these six says he that is holy he that is holy that's christ christ is holy that's why it could be our savior that's why it could be our sin bearer because he has no sin of his own he is holy and then he has the ability he has the power he has the redemption and he has the possibility of making you as holy as himself he has the nature of holiness and is able to give you that nature of holiness as well look at acts chapter 4 reading from verse 27 acts chapter 4 verse 27 and when the church came together they were praying and this is what they said about jesus christ for of a truth against thy holy child jesus whom thou hast anointed both herod and Pontius Pilate with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together have you noticed something there they refer to Jesus Christ as thy holy child Jesus all the apostles knew they lived with him they saw him they interacted with him his life was plain and visible before them and they said christ is holy and the angels of god too they confirm in heaven that christ is holy even the demons confirm that jesus christ is holy because he is the very son of god thy child the child jesus that is holy it says of the truth this is what Pontius Pilate and this is what Herod has done and what they said Jesus Christ is holy but you know we said he is a transformative Christ what he has 
what he is is able to make you and what he has done is able to make you do look at uh, this word of god in romans chapter 6 looking at verse 6 this is the result of his sacrifice and this is the result of his uh, of his atonement on the cross of calvary he tells us in romans chapter 6 looking at verse 6 knowing this that our old man is crucified with him that the body of sin might be destroyed that the body of sin might be destroyed that henceforth we should not serve sin and what the lord is saying there is that he died on the cross so that it can take away all the visible sins all the outward sins not only that even the root of sin even the very nature of sin is able to deal with that and it says that henceforth we will not serve sin it tells us in verse 7 in verse 7 it tells us for he that is dead is freed from sin that is he kills that nature of sin and then the old man is dead the old nature is dead and he says that old nature that is dead now will cease from sinning look at verse 18 in verse 18 it tells us being then made free from sin he became the servants of righteousness that's what he has done for us that's what he's able to do for us and he'll do it for everyone in jesus name the grace that sets us free the grace that keeps us free and the grace that makes us to walk in righteousness and holiness all the days of our lives it tells us that this grace is given that he himself by his sacrifice he himself by his power he makes us righteous look at verse 22 there in verse 22 it says but now be made free from sin and become servants to God ye, be, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life it changes us now it transforms us now it makes us holy now because without peace and holiness no man shall see the Lord and because he knows that and because he wants to qualify us for heaven that's the reason why his grace touches our lives that's the reason why his power touches our life that's the reason why he transforms us and he makes us holy and as he makes us holy he keeps us holy he will make you holy it will keep you holy and the grace to remain in that holiness the lord will grant unto unto us in jesus name look at first peter chapter one in first peter chapter one we're looking at verse 15 first peter chapter one reading from verse 15 it says but as he which has called you is holy so be ye holy in all manner of conversation that means every time in your lifestyle every time in your interaction with people in your community that means in your family that means in the church that means when you interact with sinners you interact with saints you interact with anyone in all manner of conversation you will remain holy and then in verse 16 it tells us the reason why it says because i it is written i am be ye holy for i am holy number one then is the power of christ to make us as holy as himself number two is the possibility of being true like him or being true like him it tells us in revelation chapter 3 and we're looking at verse 7 in revelation chapter 3 verse 7 it says unto the angel of the church in philadelphia right this thing says he that is holy and is able to make us holy and number two there he that is true he that is true is true transparently true is true is perfectly true is true is perpetually truthful and remember what we're talking about that what christ is is able to make us just like that if he is true transparently you and i can be true transparently 
if the Lord Jesus Christ is trustworthy transparently you and I can be trustworthy if the Lord Jesus Christ is uh, so true that he is righteous through and through and is very unique in his truthfulness it can make you like that it can make me like that and the grace of God will be so abundant in our lives it'll make you true I said he'll make you true true to yourself and true to your family and true to your community and true everywhere you find yourself in Jesus name he that is true it tells us in the word of God in a, in a revelation chapter chapter 19 verse 11 revelation chapter 19 verse 11 it says and I saw heaven opened and behold a white horse and he that sat upon him is called was called faithful and true that's the lord jesus christ capital f there is the faithful one capital t there is the truthful one he is faithful he is called faithful and true and he in righteousness does he judge and make war in righteousness does he judge and he defeats the devil he destroys the power of the devil in the spiritual warfare which is going to be fought after the after the um, millennial reign the lord himself is going to overcome he'll overcome the antichrist he'll over overcome all the followers of the antichrist but not only that even today the lord will make us overcome the power to conquer the power to overcome the lord will effect in every one of our lives in jesus name is the one that is true and because it's true it's able to so transform us that his truthfulness will be in our lives in first corinthians chapter 5 looking at verses 7 and 8 first corinthians chapter 5 when looking at verse 7 it says purge yourself therefore purge yourself purge out therefore the old leaven old leaven of insincerity old leaven of a lie old leaven of deception old leaven of falsehood Watch out therefore the old leaven that she may be a new lamb as ye are unleavened for even christ to pass over his sacrifice for us look at verse 8 now in verse 8 this is the consequence of the fact that he is the passover lamb he is the pascal lamb he is the one that gives us total redemption he says therefore let us keep the feast not with the old leaven neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness but with the unleavened bread look at this of sincerity and truth when we come to him and he walks in our lives and he takes our lives and he turns our lives around for the better and he transforms us he makes us truthful as true as himself he makes us trustworthy as trustworthy as himself he makes us transparent as transparent as himself and now we serve him in sincerity as well as in truth it tells us in ephesians chapter 4 reading from verse 15 ephesians chapter 4 looking at verse 15 it says both speaking the truth in love speaking the truth in love to develop people speaking the law to make people have progress speaking the speaking the truth and to help people to understand what the truth is and to become exemplary so we can help other people too to be truthful it says speaking the truth in love then we grow up into him in how many things i'm asking the church in how many things in all things which is the head even christ which is the head even christ what how does that happen what does he do to us what does he do in us what does he do in our heart in our spirit to make us true as true as himself to make us trustworthy as trustworthy as himself and to make us transparent as transparent as himself look at verse 24 of that Ephesians chapter 4 it says and that he put on the new man 
which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. You put on Christ, and as you put on Christ, He has created that, and He creates that true righteousness in us. And then He tells us the consequence in verse 25. He says in verse 25, Wherefore, putting away lying, Wherefore, as a child of God, you are born again, but in a way lying, as a child of God, putting away deception, as a child of God, putting away hypocrisy, as a child of God, putting away insincerity. You are your wife, you are your husband, putting away lying, putting away deception, and putting away this, uh, all hypocrisy. It says, as children of God, here is what our life should look like. Here is the holiness he puts in us. Here is the transparent truthfulness he effects in us. He says, putting away lying in your place of work. When you are writing anything, you know, when you are feeling informed, putting away lying and putting away all deception. Anywhere you are confronted, anywhere where you are speaking, anywhere you are writing, anywhere you are doing anything, it says, here is the mark of the people who have been taught by Christ, the true Christ, who have been transformed by Christ, the true, the, transform, the transforming Christ, and the transformative Christ, it says, not because of the work of grace that is done in your heart, you put away lying, you put away hypocrisy, you put away deception, and you put away all forms of deception. Wherefore, put it away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor. And who is my neighbor? The closest person to you there, speak every man the truth with his neighbor. With your wife, no lie. With your husband, no lie. With anyone around you, no lie. Anytime you speak, any because out of the out of what is in the heart, the mouth will speak. If the truth is in your heart, if righteousness in your is in your heart, if trustworthiness is in your heart, what's in the heart is what will come out. And so when you are relating with your neighbor, when you are relating with a member of the church, when you are relating with anyone, you speak the truth with your neighbor for we are members of his body and members of one another and now you understand christ christ jesus is the one that is holy number one is the one that is true number two is the one that has the key of david the one that opened with that key and no man shut it let's come back to revelation chapter 3 and we're looking at verse 7 revelation chapter 3 and we're looking at verse 7 it says to the angel of the church in philadelphia write these things said he that is holy he that is true look at this now he that has the key of david he that openeth and no man shutteth he that shutteth and no man openeth look at that authority of christ final authority look at that authority of christ heavenly authority look at that authority of christ an irreversible authority that jesus christ said he is the one that has the key the key of david that's the key of the king the key of david that's the key of royalty the key of david that's the key of finality the key of david is the key of the eternal one the key that when you see the key it is the master's key that opens any door and that opens every door and the doors in your life of opportunity will be opened in jesus name the door to progress will be opened in jesus name the key to the power of god in your life even from today christ will make use of that key it will be opened in jesus name look at isaiah chapter 22 and we're looking at verse 22 isaiah chapter 22 reading from verse 22 he says and the key of the house of david will i lay upon his shoulder this is prophecy talking about the coming christ this is prophecy talking Talking about the very son of God that was yet to come and he says the key of the house of David when I lay upon his shoulder so he shall open and none shall shut he Christ will open and no one in heaven 
and shut that door and no one on earth will shut that door and no one in hell can shut that door it says he will give him the key he will lay the key upon his shoulder and when he lays that key upon his shoulder he says none can shut the door that he opens think about your life the doors that the almighty god has opened before you think about your life and think about your ministry and think about your profession and think about your community think about what the lord has told you and where the lord said you will be christ is opening the door before you today are you there i said christ is opening the door before you today and no man shall shut that door in jesus name when he says no man can shut the door none can shut that door what's that, what does that mean he's saying no occultic man will be able to shut the door he's saying no terrible man mr terror mr terrible will not be able to shut the door he's saying no demon possessed man will be able to shut the door he's saying no wicked man will be able to shut the door that makes you rejoicing and that makes you to have confidence in the lord and to understand that whatever god said will be will be in my life whatever god said will be will be in my family whatever god said will be will be in your ministry whatever god said will be will be he opens the door and no one can shut that door he says so he shall open and none shall shut he shall shut and none shall open and let's look at matthew in matthew we're looking at chapter 16 and verse 19 matthew chapter 16 we're reading from verse 19 and i will give unto thee he was talking to peter but peter is no more here you are here he's talking to the believer now as to confess that jesus christ is the rock of ages as to confess that jesus christ is the very son of god as to confess that jesus Christ is your savior, is your redeemer, is your sin bearer. As you confess that Jesus Christ is the one that has all power, and you give him the ultimate power and the ultimate authority in your life, he says, I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever and whatsoever and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. I thought you say an amen there yeah. whatsoever whatsoever any locked door that stands before you whatsoever any door that stands against your opportunity and your progress it says whatever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven i pray that you will experience the performance of such a promise in your life in jesus name look at matthew chapter 18 in matthew chapter 18 we're reading from verse 18 there matthew chapter 18 we're reading from verse 18 verily i say unto you whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven if i were in the congregation i would say amen if i were a member and the minister was preaching and that minister read that i will shout amen he said verily i say unto you truthfully i say unto you honestly i say unto you assuredly i say unto you whatsoever whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatsoever whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven look at verse 19 verse 19 tells us and i say unto you that if two of you 
shall agree on earth as touching any sin that they shall ask it shall be done for them of my father which is in heaven look at that it says you read the word of God you spot out the promise of God that talks to your situation and in that situation that you are in you see the promise of God you see the pronouncement of God and then another person like husband and wife another person like two friends another person like two believers you see the promise of God and you see the provision of the Lord and two of you shall agree two of you shall agree it says if any two of you if any two of you shall agree on earth as touching any sin that they shall ask any sin that they shall ask it says it shall be done for them of my father which is in heaven your prayers are answered I agree with you and you agree with me if two of us shall agree the minister and the member as touching anything you are asking the Lord it will be done of our father who is in heaven and then he tells us in verse 20 in verse 20 he says for where two or three are gathered together in my name that's the name that unites us that's the name that gives us confidence that's the name that gives us power that's the name that gives us assurance and it says where two or three are gathered together in my name i will be with them in their midst is christ here this morning is christ with you there this morning is christ with me here this morning between you and i is christ uniting us together tell me out loud and he says when two of us shall be together it will be in our midst and he says because of that we take his promise and we take his pronouncement and we take the prophetical word that he has spoken that if we agree together on that it shall be done for us it will be done in jesus name in your life it will be done your family it will be done in your ministry it will be done it makes us holy it makes us truthful and then he gives us authority the authority that comes with the key and that key of authority will be with every one of us in jesus name we're coming to point number two now point number two is the sustainable progress of a trustworthy church the sustainable progress of a trustworthy church and we're reading from revelation chapter 3 and we're looking at verse 8 revelation chapter 3 and we're reading from verse 8 it says i know thy works in the god of knowledge for samuel chapter 2 verse 3 it says the lord is a god of knowledge and all actions are waged by him all actions are waged by him the god of knowledge jesus christ knows all things he knows all things about you he knows all things about me i know thy works i know thy activities i know thy service i know your occupation i know your thoughts i know your plans i know everything about you and within you i know thy works behold by the knowledge he has behold i search before thee an open door and no man shall shut it for thou hast a little strength a little strength don't let that bother you a little strength a little faith a little grace a little backbone a little courage a little boldness that boldness even if it is little and that strength even if it is little is coming from heaven it will destroy every enemy here on earth in jesus name thou hast a little strength and has kept my word and has not denied my name look at verse 9 it tells us in verse 9 behold i will make them of the synagogue of satan which say they are jews and are not but do lie 
they say they're Jews, but they do lie. They say they're righteous, but they do lie. They say they're by like, their sons and daughters of Abraham, but they do lie. They say they're Jews, but they lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee and then in verse 10 he gives us the promise because thou hast kept the watch of my patience i also will keep thee from the hour of temptation which shall come upon the world and to try them that dwell upon the earth and then he tells us in verse 11 in verse 11 he says behold i come quickly hold that fast which thou hast has, hold that fast which thou hast that no man take thy crown nobody will take your crown nobody will take your reward and nobody will take the presence the power the progress and everything the lord has promised you nobody will take that out of your life in jesus name three things we're looking at here number one it's the open door for submissive sins a servant the servants of god the children of god were submissive unto the lord he keeps an open door before them the open door for submissive servants number two the ordained dominion the dominion that is ordained in heaven and that dominion that authority and that power you will have and nothing will shift that dominion that power from your life in jesus name the ordained dominion for sanctified saints and then number three is the overcomer's destiny in surpassing splendor the overcomer's destiny in surpassing splendor number one let's look at it. verse 8 there in verse 8 is the open door for submissive servants look at revelation chapter 3 verse 8 it says i know thy works behold i have set before thee an open door and no man shall shut it for thou has a little strength and has kept my word and has not denied my name Look at that verse again. I'm going to make it personal. This is mine. I said, This is mine. It's the word of the Lord to every believer. It's the word of the Lord to every child of God. It's the word of the Lord to you. And it says, I know He knows my works. He knows my heart. He knows my intention. He knows my devotion. He knows my consecration. He knows my works. Behold, He has said before me, say it for yourself. He has said before me, say it for yourself. He has said before me an open door. What kind of door do you have in front of you? I said, what kind of door do you have in front of you? An open door into blessing? An open door into opportunities? An open door into marriage? An open door into success? An open door into evangelism? An open door into the kingdom of God? An open door into the power of God? An open door into victory and triumph in Jesus' name. He has set before me an open door, and no man can shut it. And no man can shut it. You believe that? And do you believe that no man is as powerful as Christ? Do you believe that no man is as powerful as Christ? And that whatever door the Lord has opened, no evil man can shut that door before you. No occultic man can shut that door before you. And no evil man and nobody that is filled with Satan, saturated by devils and demons, no man can shut that door before you in Jesus' name. For I have a little strength, I have a little faith, 
I have a little grace. I have a little trust. I have that little strength. And then he says, I have kept his word with that little strength, with that little grace. You will keep the word of God. You will stand firm in the word of God. And then he says, you have not denied my name. You will not deny the name of the Lord in Jesus' name. You will stand firm, you will stand faithful, you will stand true until the end in Jesus' name. And the power to keep his word, the power to be obedient to his word, the power to stand for his word and by his word all the days of your life, the Lord will grant unto you in Jesus' name. It's telling us something here. There are times you feel small. There are times you feel weak. There are times you feel you have only a little strength. There are times you feel you have only a little faith. At such a time, remember that when you think you have a little strength, a little faith, and a little confidence and a little courage you feel that all you have is small and little you'll still be an overcomer i will still be an overcomer i said i will still be an overcomer the open door look at acts of the apostle chapter 14 verse 27 acts chapter 14 verse 27 is talking about the open door of faith it says and when they were come and had gathered the church together they rehearsed all that god had done with them and how he had opened look at this how he had opened the door of faith unto the gentiles he had opened the door of faith unto the gentiles when you speak the door of faith will be open when you pray the door of faith will be open when you minister the door of faith will be open that's what christ is saying i set an open door before you and it is the open door of faith the open door of faith and no one will shut that door of faith unbelief will not shut the door of faith in your life in your family in your ministry in your profession in jesus name and then he tells us now in chapter 26 of acts acts chapter 26 we're reading from verse 16 acts chapter 26 we're reading from verse 16 it says for christ and stand upon thy feet for i have appeared unto thee for this purpose to make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen and of those things in the which i will appear unto thee look at verse 17 here is the promise for you delivering thee from the people it will deliver you i said it will deliver you from the people of the power of darkness it will deliver you from the people that wants to destroy you and following after the plan of satan the lord will deliver you in every place of danger in every place of difficulty in all the places of darkness the lord will deliver you delivering thee from the people and from the gentiles unto whom i now send thee look at verse 18 there in verse 18 there it says there's the open door now to open their eyes to open their eyes first of all your own eyes will be opened i said first of all your own eyes will be opened you see the riches of christ you see the riches of the kingdom you see the treasure that the lord has for you to open your eyes first and then you will be an instrument to open the eyes of other people you open their eyes in the physical when their eyes are dim and when they're going blind that, that cataract when you speak in the name of jesus that cataract will vanish away and spiritual spiritual blindness when they're blind spiritually and you speak and you preach and you pray that a spiritual blindness will vanish away in jesus name and when there is opportunity there there is possibility there and all those blessings of god there but the eyes of the people the minds of the people are not open to that the lord will open your eyes you'll see your opportunity 
you see the goodness of God, you see the power of God, and the people like Hagar who did not see that well of water, the Lord will open your eyes. You'll see the provision of the Lord in Jesus' name to open their eyes, to turn them from darkness to light, and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins when you preach to people, when you tell them about Christ who is mighty to save and they don't understand, the Lord will open their eyes so they can have forgiveness of sins in Jesus' name. And then the believers you open their eyes that the second work, there's a second work of grace, there's sanctification, there's holiness without which no man shall say the Lord, there's experience of purity of heart, the Lord will give them inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in Christ in Jesus' name. Opening of the eyes, the Lord will open their eyes in Jesus' name. And then, do you remember this? You must remember, Peter was kept in the prison. And because the Sanhedrin and all those people against the preaching of the gospel, they didn't like it, they locked him up. And then an angel went there, opened the door, your prison doors are open. And then Paul and Silas were in the prison too, and they locked them up, wanting to deal with them. You know, the people of the world, there's somebody who's saying, they're so powerful, they're so mighty, they will deal with you, and they lock you up this day. You, we open the prison doors of your life, nobody will deal with you in Jesus' name. And so Paul and Silas began singing and as they were singing an earthquake happened and the very foundation of the prison was shaking and all the doors were open the doors are open before you in Jesus name that's the promise the Lord has given us there will be a confirmation affirmation in your life today in Jesus name Point number two is the ordained dominion for sanctified saints. The ordained dominion for sanctified saints. We're looking at Revelation chapter 3 and we're looking at verse 9. Revelation chapter 3 and we're reading from verse 9. It tells us in verse 9, Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but they do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet. You didn't hear that one. I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. Underline that last line, I have loved thee. How much love does Christ has for you? How much, how much love does uh, Christ have for you? Does God have for you? Does heaven have for you? As the Father has loved the Lord Jesus Christ, even so he has loved you. And he says he will make the people of the world to know that he has loved you. And he gives you the overcomer's dominion. Overcomer's dominion. As you come to the Lord, you are saved. Your sins are washed away. You come to the Lord. You are sanctified. You are purified. And you are perfected in your heart. And you are following the Lord with a perfect heart. He says now, here is what I'll do for you because you love me and I love you. Here is what I'm, I'm going to do for you because you delight in me and I delight in you. Here is what I'm going to do because you put me first and my love is number one in your life. You have the first love for me. I also put you first and I have the first love for you. He says, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan which say they are Jews and are not but do lie. I will make them to come and worship before thy feet. You have dominion, you have authority over every power in Jesus' name. 
And let me remind you of a promise you knew, but where um, some of us are forgetting. It's in uh, Ma, it's in uh, it's in Luke chapter ten. In Luke chapter ten, I'm reading from verse seventeen. Luke chapter ten, we're reading from verse seventeen. It says, "And the seventy returned again with joy." I'm returning back home with joy this afternoon. I said I'm returning back home with joy this afternoon. The joy of triumph, the joy of victory, and the joy of ultimate power that no man can reverse. It says those 70 believers, they came back and they came with joy saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. Even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And then in verse 18, look at what Jesus said, and he said unto them, them and he's saying unto me I said he's saying unto me I said he's saying unto me I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven and now in verse 19 he says in verse 19 behold I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions my people are not hearing behold I give unto you power power to tread on serpents power to tread on scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you nothing shall by any means hurt you nothing you sleep nothing shall by any means hurt you nothing on the road nothing shall by any means hurt you nothing from the river nothing shall by any means hurt you nothing from those evil spirits nothing shall by any means hurt you you believe that you take it to heart you personalize it and when anything is happening uh, that the devil is saying ah, this is going to catch you this is going to get you and this is going to destroy you confidently and peacefully you tell the devil and you tell yourself and you tell anybody who cares to hear nothing shall by any means hurt me amen the Lord confirmed that in every life in Jesus name number three there is the overcomers destiny in surpassing splendor the overcomers destiny in surpassing splendor we're looking at Revelation chapter 3 and we're looking at verse 10 Revelation chapter 3 and we're reading here from verse 10 it says Revelation chapter 3 verse 10 because thou hast kept the word of my patience because thou hast kept the word of my patience with your little strength with your little grace with your little faith with your little stamina and with your little trust and with your little confidence and because of the little sin you have and you know that you're a child of God even though your faith is small even though your strength is small it says because thou hast kept the word of my patience I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation from the hour of trial from the hour of tribulation which shall come upon all the world that's talking about the great tribulation the temptations that people have many temptations are localized the trials that people have many of those trials are localized but this one that Jesus said I'll keep you from the hour of temptation from the hour of trial from the hour of tribulation this is the temptation this is the trial this is the tribulation which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth but the child of God will be taken out of this world before that time of tribulation in Jesus name 
because before that tribulation the trumpet shall sound and the dead in Christ shall rise and then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together to be with them in the clouds and so shall we ever be with the Lord in Jesus name you remember the story of Noah and his family before the flood of devastation came upon all the world before the delusion came upon all the world Noah and his family were saved in the ark in the same way that means that when the, when the tribulation is about to start just before that time Christ will come he'll be in the air and then he will take his own children he'll take his own servants he'll take his own saints he'll take them away from the earth and it's after we have left this place that that great tribulation will come upon this world i will not be part of the great tribulation i will not go through the great tribulation because it says you are sanctified you are holy and because of the little strength you have kept his word he says it will keep you from the hour of temptation which shall come upon the whole world to try them that dwell upon the face of the earth you remember the time of lord when the fire was come was to come to devastate the whole of sodom and gomorrah but the lord too sent those angels and he took lord and his two daughters and the wife they took them away from sodom before the fire could come down except that the wife looked back and became a pillar of salt and jesus said remember lord's wife i will not be like lord's wife i will not be like lord's wife i will not be like lord's wife i will not perish for the world i will not perish with sodom and gomorrah but i will have the escape you'll escape in jesus name uh, look at the word of god it tells us in the luke chapter 21 and i'm reading from verse 34 luke chapter 21 we're looking at verse 34 it tells us and take it to yourselves lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with suffering and drunkenness and cares of this life and so that day come upon you unawares in verse 35 it says for as a snare shall it come upon all them look at that as is near it shall come upon all them that dwell upon the face of the earth and then in verse 36 it says watch ye therefore and pray always that she may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come and to stand before the son of man you will escape i said you will escape Look at First Thessalonians, First Thessalonians chapter five, and I'm reading from verse nine. First Thessalonians chapter five, we're reading from verse nine. For God has not appointed us to us. God has not appointed us for the great tribulation. God has not appointed us for that temptation that will sweep the whole earth. God has not appointed us unto wrath, but to obtain, obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. He has not appointed us for the great tribulation. He has not appointed you for the great tribulation. He has not appointed the believers, the saints of God, the children of God, unto the great tribulation. It's like if you add the why, and then you know there's going to be danger in that place, and you, you have the opportunity of sending to your wife, of even going there to take your wife out out of that uh, trouble out of that devastation if you're a real husband if you are a biblical husband if you're a loving husband the first thing you'll do you'll rush there and take your wife away out of that and then that devastation will fall and it will not come upon your wife in jesus name 
the church is the bride of Christ the church is the wife of Christ and since he knows that tribulation was going to come and he knows that all that devastation was going to come it will come and it will take the bride away from here before that great great tribulation will come upon the earth make sure you are part of the bride of Christ and you will not go through the great tribulation in Jesus name uh, have you known here? Have you known something about any country? Take our country, for example. If our country has ambassadors in another country, and that other country is going to be at war with our country, and our country is going to be at war with that country, what the first thing they will do, they will recall all the ambassadors where that devastation of war and where that battle is going to be, they will recall all. All the ambassadors back home before that war will start the great tribulation is war against the world the great tribulation is the wrath of God against the world and when that great tribulation the wrath of God is going to come God is going to take all his ambassadors all his children all his servants all the people of God the whole church the living church the church that is saved the church that that is sanctified the church the second coming church that is looking for the second coming of the lord the lord is going to take all those ambassadors away from this world and they will be secured with him up above before the great tribulation will come ambassadors of christ where are they today i said ambassadors of christ where are they today the lord will take you out of this place before the great tribulation in jesus name because he assures us that this temptation this devastation this tribulation will come upon all the world and then he says you will be secured by sight before that tribulation will happen in jesus name he has gone to prepare a place for you a place for me a place for the church and he says when he goes and prepares a place he will come again and he will take you unto himself so that where where he is there you will be also you'll be there in jesus name we're coming now we're coming to point number three in point number three is a spectacular privilege of teachable christians spectacular privilege of teaching teachable christians and let's come to revelation chapter 3 we're looking at verse 11 in verse 11 it says behold i come quickly it's about to come and i pray you'll not be asleep when it comes in jesus name behold i come quickly hold that fast which thou hast that no man take thy crown Hold that fast with tenacity. Hold that fast with steadfastness. Hold that fast which thou hast that no man take thy crown. You see, this is the time to hold fast. This is the time to hold on. You have any grace of God? Hold it fast. You have salvation? Hold it fast. You have conviction? Hold it fast. You have commitment, hold it fast. You have the ministry, hold it fast. You have any opportunity the Lord has given you, hold that fast. You have your soul to keep, hold that fast. And you have the hope of heaven, hold that fast. You see, there are people, either there's a little sickness, or there's a little challenge, or there's a little persecution, or there's a little opposition. The salvation they have, the confidence they have, the hope they have, they drop that and you don't know the last temptation you will have before Christ comes. You don't know the last sickness you have before the Lord comes. You don't know the last persecution you have before the Lord comes and he says because the Lord is coming and he says I come quickly. He says because of that, that which you have, hold it fast so that no man will take your crown nobody will take your crown in jesus name hold fast your salvation don't allow anybody to take that away from you hold fast 
the holiness and the conviction and the sanctification. Don't allow anybody to take that away from you. Hold fast your consecration and your commitment. Don't allow anyone to take that away from you. Hold fast all the promises the Lord has given you and all the promises you have made unto the Lord. Hold that fast because the Lord is coming so that no man will take your crown. No man will take my crown. I said, no man will take my crown. Look at verse 12. It tells us in verse 12, him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God and he shall no more go out and I will write upon him my new name the name of my God and the name of the city of my God which is New Jerusalem which cometh down out of heaven from my God and I will write upon him my new name I will write upon on him my new name the name of the Lord Almighty and the name of the Lord eternal and the name of the Lord powerful will be written upon you in Jesus name and then now he tells us in conclusion in verse 13 he says in verse 13 he that has an ear let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. What's he telling us here? The peculiar privilege of a teachable Christian. Look at three things here. Number one, there is, it is a promise for diligent hearers. He that has an ear, that's the, that's the promise for diligent hearers. Number two, is the provision for dutiful hearers number one there are diligent hearers number two there are there are uh, dutiful hearers and number three the possession of devoted hearers that's the kind of hearer the lord wants you to be number one be a diligent hearer Number two, be a dutiful hearer. Number three, be a devoted hearer of the word of God and the promises and the prophecies the Lord has made to he that has an ear to hear and who is hearing. The Lord will fulfill those promises in your life in Jesus' name. Number one is the promise and the promise of a diligent hearer. The promise of a diligent hearer in Exodus chapter 15 looking at verse 26 Exodus chapter 15 we're looking at verse 26 it says if ye is and he said if thou will diligently hacking that's the word underline that word diligently hacking diligently hacking to the voice of the Lord thy God and will do that which is right in his sight and will give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes I will put none of these diseases upon thee which I have brought upon the Egyptians for I am I am I am the Lord that healeth thee let the church say amen that's the promise of God to diligent hearers. Diligent hearers. Look at uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28, and I'm reading from verse 1. Revelation chapter 28, we're reading from verse 1. It says in verse 1 there that if ye shall, and it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently, that's the word again. Look at that. If thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth if you diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord your God promotion is coming for you exaltation is coming for you Upliftment is coming for you. It says, if you will hearken diligently, 
unto the voice of the Lord your God to observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day, then the Lord will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth. Look at verse 13 there. In verse 13, it tells us, And the Lord shall make thee the head. That's mine. I said that's mine. The Lord shall make me the head and not the tail. And I will be above only. And I will be above only. And I shall not be beneath. If thou hearken, if that thou hearken unto the commandment of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day to observe and to do them, to observe and to do them. Let me show you something in Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 13. Deuteronomy chapter 11, we're looking at verse 13 here. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 13, it shall come to pass from this afternoon, it shall come to pass from this day, it shall come to pass from this year, it shall come to pass. Do you remember that this year is going to be the best year I ever lived in my life? Say it for yourself, this year is going to be the best year I ever lived in my life. You lost it, I didn't hear your voice. The Lord confirmed that in your life in Jesus' name. Pandemic will not cancel that prophecy. COVID-19 will not cancel that prophecy. Because when he opens the door, no pandemic and no man, either China or anywhere, will close that door in Jesus' name. And it shall come to pass if ye shall hearken diligently, that's the word, diligently unto the commandment which I command you this day to love the Lord your God and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. What's going to be the result? Look at verse 21. In verse 21, that your days may be multiplied and the days of your children in the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers to give them. Read what follows now. Everybody, one, two, three, go. Everybody in unison, one, two, three, go. As the days of heaven upon the earth. The days of heaven upon the earth. No sickness in heaven. No depression in heaven. No accident in heaven. No calamity in heaven. No poverty in heaven. No crying in heaven. No tears in heaven. If you diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord your God, He'll give you the days of heaven upon the earth in Jesus' name. Those are the diligent hearers. Now the dutiful hearers. Those are the people that hear and do. Those are the people that hear the word of God and immediately they're dutiful and they do. Those are the people that hear the word of God and promptly they do. Those are the people that hear the word of God and wholeheartedly they do. They do that word. The duty for hearers, the provision of God upon their lives. In James chapter 1, reading from verse 25. James chapter 1, we're looking at verse 25. It says, but also look at into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein he be not a forgetful hearer but a doer of the work those are dutiful people obedient people 
and those are people that the Lord can trust and the Lord can depend upon it says they are not forgetful hearers but they are doers of the work this man this believer shall be blessed in his deed the Lord will bless you in Jesus name he tells us in Isaiah chapter 48, Isaiah chapter 48, and we're reading from verse 18, Isaiah chapter 48, reading from verse 18, Oh, that thou art hearkened to my commandments, oh, that you art hearkened. Oh, that you are listening. Oh, that you are teachable. Oh, that you will walk according to the way, according to the word of the Lord. Oh, that thou art hearkened to my commandments. Then at thy peace being as a river. That's the promise. That's the provision. At thy peace being as a river. And thy righteousness at the waves of the sea. Thy righteousness at the waves of the sea. Look at verse 19. In verse 19, it says, Thy seed also had been as the sand and the sea, and the offering and the offspring of thy bowels shall be like the gravel thereof, and his name should not have been cut off nor destroyed from before me. When you listen to the word of God and you do that word of God and you are dutiful and you are prompt and you give yourself wholeheartedly to the obedience of the word of God, it says your peace will be like a river. And it, it says all your enemies will be cut off but you will not be cut off yourself in Jesus name and look at the third thing there and the third thing there is the, uh, the, the possession of devoted hearers the possession of devoted hearers as you give yourself to the Lord and you say I am going to keep the word of the Lord and everything the Lord is saying I am going to obey and I'm going to give myself wholeheartedly or reservedly unto that word see what the Lord will do for you in Acts of the Apostles chapter 3 Acts of the Apostles chapter 3 we're reading from verse 19 Acts of the Apostles chapter 3 we're reading from verse 19 here it says repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord for sin when you are a diligent hearer when you are a dutiful hearer when you are a devoted hearer a time the time of refreshing will come from the presence of the Lord all the dryness in your life everything will be washed away all the weariness in your life everything will be washed away because the time of refreshing will come from the very presence of the Lord and then in verse, in verse 20 it says in verse 20 it tells us and it shall send Jesus Christ which before was preached unto you and then in verse 21 in verse 21 it says whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution that word restitution there is restoration the restoration of all things everything you have lost restoration of all things all the promises the lord has given restoration of all things all the provisions you had before which you don't have today restoration of all things all the good good things and the better things of the kingdom of the new covenant all those things there's going to be restoration in your life in jesus name which god has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets says the world began how will that happen look at verse 22 in verse 22 for moses truly said unto the fathers a prophet shall the lord your god raise up unto you of your brethren like unto me him shall ye hear in all things him shall ye obey in all things him shall ye submit to in all things him shall ye uh, shall ye surrender in all things him shall ye hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you 
whatsoever he shall say unto you the Lord hath given us promises today that once the promises begin to be fulfilled in your life there will be great 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 progress in your life in Jesus name open door in your life in Jesus name is going to fill your heart with blessing you are going to possess the inheritance of the saints in Jesus name as you look at everything we have learned today see what the Lord is saying the Lord is saying there's going to be a transparent truthfulness that's what he'll do for you transparent truthfulness is also going to give you the purity of heart because as he is holy it will make you holy as he is pure it will make you pure purity in a holy heart Lord give it to everyone in Jesus name then there's going to be transparent truthfulness and then there's going to be the master key the master key to open every door and to lock any door that you don't want in your life that key is in your hand even today in Jesus name is the key to bind and to lose the key to bind and to lose are you with me where are you I want to see your face I see your hand but I want to see your face that's your face I say that's your face husband and wife they are going back home and as they get and they are going back home the husband has the key to open the door the wife has the key to open the door the same key the same door and then one of them is standing there he doesn't bring out his own key he's telling the other one open the door now and the other one is also looking at him and he's saying open the door now you know what the church has done you have the key in your hand I have the key in my hand and then you are there in the dead of the night there's a problem and instead of bringing out the key and opening that door and blessings will flow in and healing will flow in and deliverance will flow in you're saying i wish i could get the pastor now i wish i could get the gs now hey my brother my sister the key in your hand is as good as the key in my hand you didn't hear that one i said the key in your hand is as good as the key in my hand and so instead of waiting at the door and then hey, where is the gs can you give me the telephone of the gs can you link me up with the gs bring your key out you will open the door in jesus name any door that i can open you can open and so don't wait anymore the key is in your hand what door you open will be opened in jesus name and what door you lock all those territorial spirits and curse and yoke and whatever lock the door against them they will never come to your family again that's a possession that's a possession we have you have the master key to open the door and to lock the door to bind and to lose and we have strength for every situation you have strength for every situation whatever small strength you have you will stand whatever small strength you have you will remain steadfast until the end in jesus name and we have the victory over all contrary powers all those people from the synagogue of satan they have been throwing something at you and throwing something at you and then you have been running stop running come back look back at the enemy even looking at the enemy the power of god will silence them because now we have the victory over contrary powers and then we have divine love of god the enemies will know that i have loved you as god the father has loved me and we have special protection we have special protection no evil will come near your door in jesus name and we have 
grace sufficient under all circumstances and we have the faith and the courage that overcome and then we have the stability of a pillar i will make him a pillar in the i'll make him a pillar in the temple of my god if you can see the pillars in our headquarters church here you have not been here for six months you've been away but those pillars have remained there still the wind has blown those pillars have remained and all the whatever that has happened those pillars have remained and you will be like a pillar in the temple of god the wind will not blow you away the rivers will not drown you the fire will not burn you up he says he'll make you like a pillar yes he's talking about new jerusalem he's talking about heaven but even now you'll be as stable as a pillar as solid as a pillar in jesus name then he says there's a name a name that is written the name of my god and he says he will put that name on you well that's for then but now today he has given us a name that cannot fail i said he has given us a name that cannot fail and when you mention that name the name of jesus every knee will bow when you mention that name of jesus every power will be conquered when you mention that name of jesus the name in your mouth the name from your heart the name that gives you faith and authority and confidence you mention that name you'll be the victor in jesus name and then he gives us a teachable spirit a receptive spirit that everything we've had today everything the lord has given unto us today they'll be permanent in every one of our lives in jesus name i am blessed i said i am blessed and the blessing of the lord is permanent in my life in jesus name we're going to rise up now we're going to commit everything we've learned we're going to commit it to the hands of the lord the lord has blessed us and the lord has spoken to us as an exemplary church the lord has spoken unto us as a saved church a sanctified church a spirit-filled church the lord has spoken to us as a faithful church as a fruitful church and you are part of that church open your mouth and talk to the lord in prayer recollect everything you have heard bring back to your mind everything you have heard and understand what the lord himself has committed into your hand he has called you to repentance you have repented he has called you to salvation you have been saved he has called you to the kingdom of god you are in the kingdom he has called you into the family of god and you are a child of god he has called you to faithfulness part of the faithful church and you are you are a faithful christian tell the lord i thank you lord i thank you lord i thank you for your grace grace for salvation i thank you grace for steadfastness i thank you grace for sanctification i thank you grace for service i thank you and grace for stability in the kingdom of god lord i thank you let the spirit of god bear witness in your heart let the spirit of god bear witness in your heart that everything he has done everything he has given you have received what he did on the cross of calvary for your salvation accept that own him as lord believe him as lord accept him as lord understand he is yours he is yours and what he is is able to make you identification with the lord he is holy he can make you holy meek and gentle it can make you meek and gentle obedient to the father it can make you obedient to the father loving loyal can make you loving can make you loyal totally yielded to the father 
totally yielded to the word of God. It can make you a yielded vessel, a holy vessel, a cleansed vessel, a pure vessel. What he is, is able to make us. Can give us his nature, can give us his character, can give us his attributes. And he makes us true. He makes us true and truthful. He takes hypocrisy out of our lives when we come to him. He takes deception, lying out of our lives when we come to him. He takes his sincerity away from us when we yield completely unto him. He takes falsehood away from us when we surrender unto him. Makes us true as he is true. And he gives us the key. He applies the key to us. He has the key, the key of David, the key of the king, the key of royalty, the key of finality. And he opens the door before us which no man can shut he opens the door before you door of salvation is opened everyone can be saved the door of grace is open the door of faith is open everything faith can accomplish will be accomplished in your life the door of fruitfulness is opened you can be fruitful in every way the door of joy happiness open before you you can be happy you can be joyful and it will take every source of sorrow, of sadness, away from your life, away from your family. He opens the door. Go through that open door. Be a submissive servant, surrender all to Christ, let him be the Lord of your life, let him be the final authority in your life. Identify with him. Stay by his side. You died with Christ. You are buried with Christ. You are risen with Christ. The key he has is the same key. He has put in your hand. It will make you successful. It will make you victorious. It will make you unconquerable. It will fulfill the purpose 
of your existence. He has ordained dominion for your life. He has ordained victory, triumph in your life. And you can have the overcomer's destiny. Be a diligent hearer. Hear the word. Obey the word. Accept the word. Live by the word. Let the word be your charge, your compass. Dictating, directing the way you ought to go. If you are a diligent hearer of the word, if you are a dutiful hearer of the word, if you are a devoted hearer of the word, then all his promises will be yes and amen in your life. You obey promptly. You obey wholeheartedly. You obey implicitly and explicitly. You obey in every detail. Every word they are sent unto you. And his promises will be yes and amen in your life. His provision will be full in your life. And your possession will be overflowing. He'll give you a holy heart. He'll help you every day, every time. To follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Make you to serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness all the days of your life. He'll make you pure. He'll make you truthful, make you sincere, make you honest. He has given you the key already. No temptation will overcome you. No power will overcome you. No devil will overcome you no river will drown you no fire will burn you up your strength little strength that strength you can obey the word of God with that strength can be an overcomer. Victory is yours. Victory over every contrary power. Victory is yours. And the divine love of God is upon your life. Special protection. Peculiar protection, permanent protection, sufficient grace. Whatever your situation, He has given you sufficient grace. Accept that, believe that, 
stand with that. And it gives you faith and courage. Faith and courage. Be an overcomer. None of us has any excuse to be defeated, to be downtrodden, to be trampled over. Because now we have the faith, we live by the faith of the Son of God who loved us and gave himself for us and it'll make you unshakable as a pillar it'll make you immovable as a pillar it'll make you stable solid steadfast as a pillar Remember you have his name, the name that conquers every foe. That name is recognized in heaven. That name will conquer every evil sin that is directed against your life. And it gives you a teachable spirit, a teachable heart, a teachable mind, a teachable personality. And it says to you, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. And it makes you an overcomer and gives you the light of heaven here on earth. The light of heaven on earth. The victory of heaven on earth. The triumph of heaven on earth recall the promises of God to you and to the whole church and make this year the best year that you have ever lived in your life is able, able, able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you ask or think according to the power that walketh in you. Thank you. Praise his name, believing he has answered your prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Raise up your hand as we pray together. Remember, everything is available. Salvation available. Victory over sin available. Sanctification, holiness available. Trustworthiness, truthfulness available. Power, the power of the Holy Ghost available stability and steadfastness available that you can be 
every sin the Lord has ordained you should be all is available and as you trust as you believe as you accept as you personalize as you internalize and you say yes all is mine you'll never be the same again in Jesus name Father we we'll thank you for this service. We we'll thank you for your presence in the service. We we'll thank you for the enlightenment you have given us. We we'll thank you for the opening of our hearts and the opening of our eyes. We we'll thank you because of the privileges we have now opened unto every child of God, every sage of God, every servant of God. We're asking, Lord, that all these promises and provisions will be yes and amen in every life. In Jesus' name. All those great men of the Bible, like Enoch, like Samuel, like Daniel, like Peter, like Paul, what they had, they couldn't transfer directly into our lives. Enoch was holy. He couldn't make his wife holy. Enoch was righteous. He couldn't make his own sons righteous. Enoch was qualified to take part in the rapture. He couldn't qualify the people around him to go in the rapture. But Jesus Christ is greater than Enoch, greater than Samuel, greater than David, greater than Daniel, greater than Paul, greater than Peter, greater than angels. What he is, is able to reproduce in us. Lord, as you are holy, make your people holy in Jesus' name. As you are pure, make your people pure in Jesus' name. As you are transparently trustworthy and true, make your people transparently trustworthy and truthful in Jesus' name. As you have the key of authority, final authority, and you have the key of power, Lord, you've transferred that now into the hands of all your saints, all the sheep, all the servants of God, all the stewards of the kingdom of God. We pray every one of us will receive the key in Jesus' name. When you are here on earth, you are not sick. You are not now trodden. You were not defeated. You had the key in your hand. And when you opened, not a demon could shut. And when you shut the door, not a demon, not a devil could open that door. And you have passed that key into our hands now. That same power give to every believer. That same authority give to every believer. And that same courage and boldness, conviction, give to every believer in Jesus' name. Lord, today we close the door to our past. All the past timidity will lock the door. All the past sicknesses will lock the door. All the past oppression will lock the door. All the past yoke will lock the door. All the past territorial spirits will lock the door. All the past failure will lock the door. We use the key of power and authority you have given us and we lock the door against all those evil things in our lives in Jesus' name. Lord, the key you have, you have given us is able to open every door. The master key that opens the door, we possess that now. And Lord, with that authority you have given to me, I open the door of blessing for all your children. In Jesus' name. Lord,
what those have been trying and failing and those have been downtrodden uh, they want to get married they cannot get married they want to have children they cannot have children they want to get a job they cannot get a job they want to be happy and joyful they are not happy and cheerful and their personality have been clamped down and locked down lord i open the door of blessing for everyone I open the door of blessing for everyone and Lord I pray your people will go through that open door in Jesus name Lord make your people strong make them obedient to your word make your people stable and make them pillars in the kingdom of God in Jesus name the faith and the courage you give to soldiers of Christ, give to everyone here today in Jesus' name. And all who are hearing wherever they are in the local church or they are online, the kind of victory they have never known, the kind of courage they have never known, the kind of power they have never known, the kind of authority they have never known, pass it to everyone right now in Jesus' name. Lord, give your people a teachable spirit that as we hear, we're diligent in hearing and we obey your word. As we hear, we're dutiful in hearing and we comply with your word. As we hear, we're devoted in our hearing and we walk in the path of righteousness every time, every moment, all the days of our lives. In Jesus' name blessing upon everyone breakthrough upon everyone joy in your life victory in your life dominion in your life and you will not go to hell you will get to heaven in jesus name and that hour of temptation hour of trial hour of great tribulation coming upon this world you will not pass through that tribulation. Wrath will not be upon your life. You come into the fresh air, refreshing restoration of all the blessings of God that is meant for the saints of God. Saints of God in these last days in Jesus' name. As you go out of the service today, this will be your happiest day this year the most joyful day this year and the day of recovery and discovery in jesus name go and overcome go and succeed go and triumph go and progress and the things that knocked you down before you will walk over them in jesus name Lord, confirm me today in every life in Jesus' name. I thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. I have the victory. I have dominion. This week you'll find a difference in your life. Joy, happiness will never end your life in Jesus' name. Thank you and God bless you.